Well, hello everyone and welcome to our free April 2024 webinar, Virtual Bookkeeping Workflows, Five Steps to Success. I'm so excited that you have joined me today and I'm excited that I was able to join you because I was having computer and internet issues right before and had to restart my computer. You know what that's like when you're just waiting for the computer to restart and it says it's supposed to take four minutes and then you're 10 minutes into it and it's still restarting. But thankfully, I was able to uh, to make it and to be with you today. So as you're joining me, let me know in the chat where you're joining me from so I can see where you are, uh, where you are in the world. Uh, as I always say, I love to find out where you are, where you're joining me from. And, um, it, and really, it's because I'm so passionate about um, helping and uh, empowering you. And it always brings me joy to know that, uh, that people all over the world are able to get all of the information that I, I share. And it is really a privilege for me to be able to do so. And I see everybody uh, letting me know where they're joining from. We have Heather from North Carolina, uh, Lakeisha from New Jersey, Nancy from Texas, Jody from Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Becky from Utah, La Latasha from Central New York, Diane from Louisiana, Sherry from Manitoba, Canada, um, Dale from Orlando. I'll be in Orlando in June for two weeks, so looking forward to that. Um, Jenny from North Carolina, uh, Donna from Massachusetts, uh, Zoe from Oregon, Jesse from Texas, Stephen, um, Anthony from uh, from England, from the UK. Welcome, Anthony. Merrill from Clinton, Maryland. Uh, Jennifer from Cypress, Texas, very close to me. Uh, Diane from Santa, Clu Santa Cruz, California. And Michael from New York. Wow, there's a lot of you, 800 of you signed up for this webinar. So I know that a lot of you are joining today. And we have um, Julie from St. Kitts Nevis in the Caribbean. Must be exciting to be in the Caribbean. And so many more of you who are joining. Again, welcome to our free April 2024 webinar, Virtual with Keeping Workflows, Five Steps to Success. And I see Abigail is joining from Puerto Rico and uh, Kaushik, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, from Toronto. Tatiana from Alaska, how exciting. And Gustav from the Seashells. Uh, so as I said, I'm always amazed to find out where everybody is joining from. Some of you are right down the road from me, right down the freeway in the Houston area. Some of you from around the world. So again, welcome. Um, if you just learned about me, have a, uh, come across me through my Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok channels. My name is Veronica Wasik, and I'm the uh, I, I have three different brands uh, under my belt. Uh, I decided to change my introduction um, slide just to make it more visual. So um, I am the unstoppable introvert because I have dealt a lot with with fear with feeling like I was too shy to do all of these things. And, and I've come a long way and I'm very passionate about empowering you to do the same. So I uh, founded uh, the five minute bookkeeping YouTube channel and website. I also founded the five MB Academy for virtual bookkeepers, where I empower virtual bookkeepers to become confident professionals and business owners. And then I also have a bookkeeping company called Maven C where we help Shopify uh, and TikTok shop sellers uh, with their bookkeeping and integrations. And you can follow me on social media at 5-Minute Bookkeeping. And I still see more of you uh, joining us. And um, I believe someone is asking about audio. So um, our assistant, uh, Jill, will hopefully uh, put something there to help those who uh, don't have audio to know how to turn that on. Somebody says they love my accent. Who is that? Tanya. Yes, I am originally from Chile. I have been in, in the U.S. most of my life, but I still retain a little bit of my Chilean or Spanish accent. And then I have a, uh, some Texan in there as well. 
So it, it it's uh it's the Texas chili accent, as I like to call it. Just some administrative announcements. This presentation is subject to copyright, so you may not record it. Um, you may not share it on social media or on YouTube, and you may not share the handout on social media also. Uh, speaking of handouts, um, there will be handouts, which is just our um, our slide deck. Um, the handouts are uh, where you can access them directly from this webinar platform. You'll see the handouts tab. And um, they will also be emailed to you. So you will receive the recording and the, and the handout in an email sometime within the next 24 hours. Um, as I mentioned, Jill Keel is uh, joining us today. She's my assistant, so she will be monitoring the chat. And if I mention some links and things, she will link those for you. Uh, and if you have any questions, make sure that you put them in the chat uh, tab. So there should be, I'm sorry, not the chat, the Q&A, okay? So there is a chat tab that's just to, you know, interact amongst yourselves. Uh, but if you have a question for me, put, put that in the Q&A tab. I will be answering your questions. Uh, when I finish my presentation and, and should hopefully leave enough time to be able to answer all your questions. At least I aim to do that. So again, put your questions in the Q&A tab. This, uh, this is what I will be covering today. My business journey, I'll go over tech tools, paperless document management, client onboarding, monthly bookkeeping process, team and client collaboration, and managing work status and due dates. So I wanted to talk about then and now. Remember I said I, I was just a very shy, introverted, uh, very scared person when I started my business in 2010. And there's a stark contrast between uh, the things that were happening then and uh, the thing and how you see me now and all the, uh, there's been a lot of growth and change uh, in, in the process. So then and now, uh, then was uh, 2008 actually when uh, everything really, uh, I think for many of us who were uh, going through the great recession, there were a lot of very significant and difficult uh, changes just because the economy just was really bad. So I had lost two jobs, didn't know what I was supposed to do. Um, and um, in 2010, after losing yet another job, decided to start my own uh, accounting and bookkeeping business. But I didn't have any money. I didn't have any clients. I didn't have any employees. And really, I had no idea what I was doing. Even though I knew accounting very well and I knew something about QuickBooks, really, I had no idea what I was doing. I certainly didn't know anything about marketing, selling, how to get clients, how to even run a business, how to streamline, no idea. But now I have a niche bookkeeping business. We work with premium clients. We have a team of uh, seven. Uh, team members. I work 20 hours a week or less, and, and really now I'm aiming for about 15 hours a week. I spend about 10% of my time on client work, and that percentage is actually now going down. My husband left his job in 2019, and we are moving to our farm um, sometime either end of this year or early next year. So I put 2025 just <laughs> because I don't know exactly. But uh, as I said, a lot has happened in in that time frame. And here's a picture of our house in progress. And actually, it's a little bit further along uh, than this because there's changes every single week. But we have, uh, there's the house on the left, a carport in the middle, and then a shop or a, a bar, uh, which uh, however you call it, where you are in your part of the world, uh, on the right-hand side. And we're very excited. Uh, but it, there's been a lot of uh, growing and a, a lot of struggles in the meantime um, to make all of this happen. But what were the keys to my success? Because as, as I said, I probably started out just like you, scared to death, really didn't know what I was doing, very confused. Uh, but there were some very specific things that I did 
that led me to the the level of of success if that's the the word that you want to use we'll we'll call it success that i have had well first of all i treated my business as a business um i systematized my workflows i created repeatable uh, processes and documented all of those processes all team members follow the same process and we also set client boundaries and we make sure everybody's good on the chat okay i just saw somebody say they didn't have audio but i think someone responded just wanted to make sure everyone can hear me which i think you can so as i said there were keys to my success and a lot of that had to do with systematizing what i did and creating workflows so we're going to talk about virtual keeping workflows there are a lot of challenges and 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 i experienced a lot of challenges when i went from just me with a, you know one or two uh, part-timers to a team with full-time employees um I experienced a lot of challenges and, and even just trying to, to grow my business, even as a solopreneur, it was challenging. First of all, how do you work virtually with clients? How do you work efficiently so you can be profitable? How do you know which apps to work with? Because there are a lot of apps and how can you scale your business? So here are the five steps to success, starting from the the top and going clockwise tech tools document management client onboarding the monthly bookkeeping process and team and client collaboration in my mind those are the the key things the pillars that you have to build in your business in order to to be successful to be profitable and eventually scale if that's what you want to do or if in the if you are in the middle of trying to scale again this all applies no matter where you are in your business. Let's start with tech tools. First of all, I know that so many of you get very, very confused and overwhelmed with the amount of apps that there are. And yes, there are many, many apps. And when I started out, I, I like to call them the, the, the baby apps. We have the apps or babies because, <laughs> um, all of cloud accounting uh, apps and everything sort of has has um, really taken off uh, while I have been in, in business. And I had the same issue as you. There's way too many. I don't know what to choose. Um, I, you know, I have the shiny objects uh, syndrome, like, oh, here's a new app. Let me try that. Here's this other one. Let me try that. And ultimately, it's, it's just a waste of time. But here's what I learned. You don't need that many apps when you are clear on the business that you want to build, the clients that you want to work with, and the services that you want to provide. So you need to get clarity on your business, on your clients, and on your services in order to then determine what are the right apps that you need to be working with. So what are the essential bookkeeping apps? First of all, basic business apps, service delivery apps, workflow management, sales and marketing, and niche apps if you have a niche that you work with. So here's an example. If you're, if you're starting out, here's a, a sample tech stack. So I'll work from the top and go clockwise. For payroll, Gusto. For receipt capture, Dext, and actually I meant to update the slide because now uh, Keeper also has receipt capture. So Dext or Keeper app would be good for receipt capture. Melio for accounts payable, Google Drive for document management, and then Asana and Uncat for workflow management and client communication. And at the center, um, QuickBooks Online Accountant, which allows you to work with multiple clients who use QuickBooks Online. So that is a sample beginner tech stack. If you're more advanced, here's a sample intermediate tech stack. Again, from the top going clockwise. 
Gusto for Payroll, Dext or now Keeper app for receipt capture, Melia for accounts payable, Box instead of Google Drive for document management, and then the Keeper app for workflow management and client communication. And again, at the center is QuickBooks Online Accountant. So again, we don't have to drown in apps. We don't have to keep looking at so many apps. And in fact, some of you are one, you think that an app is going to help you get organized when an app will complement what you're doing, but an app in and of itself will not help you to get organized. Number two, paperless document management. When I started my business in 2010, uh, the cloud did not, ex well, I'm sure it existed, but it did not exist in the bookkeeping world. So we had to go to client offices. We had to you know, get all the paper documents. And, and thankfully that quickly went away and it was replaced by the cloud and working virtually with clients. And I, I think now people don't even use that, that term, the cloud, as much as we, it was a big deal in 2013, 2014, when, when the cloud uh, took off and, and then we started to get the ability to work with clients virtually. So let's talk about document management and what is the purpose of document management? Because yes, while we may have worked with a lot of paper in the past, now we're working with, with electronic documents for the most part. The purpose of document management is to collaborate, to be able to work virtually with clients, gather client documents, and collaborate with your team. A second purpose is document storage. We need to store at client documents and we need to store internal documents. And a third purpose is security. We need to make sure that we're securing sensitive, sensitive documents. The goals of document management, or even just managing all of your documents, whether they're paper or whether they're electronic. Documents must be easy to search for, and they must be easy to retrieve. So that means that we can't just throw stuff everywhere. We need to organize it. And we need to organize it, especially for working with multiple clients. So here are some sample um, document folders, if you will, and, and ways in which you can organize your client documents. This is an example of what we call the team folders at our firm. And that means that th this is where all of the documents live that all of my employees and bookkeepers uh, use. So the client doesn't have access to these files. These are our internal client files. All the files are organized by the client name and we track the client company name and the client's first name and we call it the team folder. And that's what you see in the green rectangle. That is the, the team folder, <coughs> excuse me. And then for the client, we track their bookkeeping documents by year. So in that case, we have the, the blue rectangle that says ABC client 2023 bookkeeping because everything that relates to 2023 bookkeeping lives in that folder. <clears throat> and then we have the, uh, the specific subfolders where then specific documents live. So for example, we have subfolders for 1099s, accounts payable if we're doing accounts payable for clients, accounts receivable, bank and credit card reconciliations, bank and credit card statements, journal entries, payroll, sales tax. So whatever you're doing for that client should have its own subfolder. So again, easy to find because we have it all by client, all by year, and then it's subcategorized into the specific folders. And here's an example of what we called our shared folder. The shared folder is what we share with our clients so that they can upload documents to us. Uh, so we have, um, again, ABC client, best bookkeeping would be your company name. So with whatever your company name is, um, and then we call it shared folder. And within that parent folder, then we have uh, folders for 
bank and credit card statements, um, maybe some financial reports that they, that we are sharing with them, payroll reports that they're uploading to us, and maybe uh, tax returns that they have um, filed that we want to to have um, it on, in uh, filed. And um, so this folder again is where we are sharing documents with the client, and they are sharing documents with us, and we call it the shared folder. So going back to the previous. Uh, slide, we have a folder that's just for the client, internally for our team, and then we have a folder that is shared with the client. And then that's how we organize and manage all those documents. A lot of you ask me, do you need all of the receipts and all of the source documents from your client to do their bookkeeping? I know that in some countries like Canada, you do because you have to pick up all of the sales taxes and uh, properly categorize all of that. Um, in the US, we don't have that requirement. So we technically don't need all of the, the receipts and source documents from clients. And in fact, at Mavis, the my bookkeeping business, we work primarily from the bank feed and any integrated apps and only request specific information from clients. So if they have maybe a new type of transaction that we didn't know about, we're not familiar with, um, maybe there's a loan or something that we will request that specific information, but we're, we don't need to use uh, or receive all of their uh, receipts. So we don't request all of the receipts and source documents. And this model does work best with service-based companies to, uh, so, so that you don't, you know, if you don't need all of the details of the receipts, for, for example, let's say you were doing job costing, you might need to look at the receipts or vendor bills in order to, to um, allocate costs, or perhaps you have a client who's tracking inventory within QuickBooks, then you might need all of that information. Number three, client onboarding. So this is the third step to success is client onboarding. What is client onboarding? It is the process of getting a new client up and running in your business. So onboarding is not the sales process. I know some of you use that term for onboarding. Uh, to me, that's discovery and sales. Onboarding uh, generally is, is referred to as when you have that new client and you need to get them up and running in your business. So you need to get gather documents from them. Uh, you need to get them going. So that is the onboarding process. Um, and as I, I mentioned earlier, that one of the keys to success was systematizing everything that we did. So I had to break everything down into steps or, or workflows. So this is the onboarding workflow that we put together at Maven C. Starting from the top left, we get a signed service agreement and paid invoice from our client. We then send a welcome message. So we welcome the client to our client family. We let them know what the next steps are. We introduce them to our uh, um, client operations manager. Then we set them up in our company systems, whether it's QuickBooks Online, Asana, Keeper app, etc. We We set them up. Then we get everything we need from the client. Then we do a client kickoff meeting. Then we plan our work internally to make sure that, okay, we, we can assign, you know, who, who are we going to assign this client to? What are the deliverables? What do we need to do? What, what are the timelines? Are there any challenges to working with this client? Is there any particular um, um, knowledge or something that we need to know about uh, in order to uh, do this client? Then we're going to set up um, any apps if we're um, setting the client up on apps. So for example, if, if they're getting set up on Gusto for a payroll, then we're going to get them set up. And then we will begin service delivery. And this works the same way whether you're onboarding a client for a cleanup, for a diagnostic review, for monthly bookkeeping, it generally works the same way. Okay. 
One thing that you need that you can do, and remember I talked about setting client boundaries, and I know a lot of you struggle with setting client boundaries. You can use your client kickoff meeting to start setting boundaries with your clients. So in that client kickoff meeting, you're going to discuss with your client what you need from them on a monthly basis. You're going to discuss timelines for deliverables with them. So and deliver, deliverables means the things that the work that you're going to provide to your client. So say, for example, that they hired you to clean up their box and that you will have the cleanup done by May 31st. And then we will discuss that. Okay. We will, we're scheduled to complete your work by May 31st. We will discuss expectations for, for how uh, we will work together with our client. You want to do the same. How will you work with your client? Let the client know how they are expected to com to communicate with you or with your team. Uh, what is the method of communication? Is it a client portal? A portal? Is it Slack? Is it Teams? Is it email? Is it text? Is it okay for them to text you or to email you? This is where you start to set those boundaries because otherwise clients just will do whatever. They'll start texting and emailing and calling at all hours of the day and night. You'll need to let them know about the frequency of communication. How often can they contact you and your team? Let them know what your office hours are. Let them let the client know when they can expect a response from you. So is it within 24 hours? Is it three days? What can they expect? And you need to stress to your client that you cannot complete your work unless they are responsive to your requests. And we always let our clients know this because they always want to know, well, when will it be done? Well, okay, we have scheduled you for this date. However, we cannot guarantee that date if you don't respond to our requests. And then we're also very clear on out of scope requests. That means uh, uh, out of scope means any services that are outside of the services that they have agreed to pay for. And we have some wording on, um, well, actually, we actually do have some wording on our engagement letter, but in this case, this is a client kickoff meeting. So you would tell the client services outside of our existing engagement letter are subject to separate pricing. We will notify you if you request a service outside of our existing agreement. And we will, uh, I think that's supposed to say provide, we will provide a clear price estimate or upfront pricing before completing additional services. So make sure you get this handout because then you can get that wording. And, uh, and also uh, really, this is essentially your agenda for meeting with your, um, your client. And another thing that we did at Maven C is to put together a client onboarding checklist. So not only did we break, break everything down into the steps that, and what are we going to do next? Uh, we also then created an onboarding checklist just to have every, every single step that we do during onboarding is included in that checklist. And this is an excerpt of our client onboarding checklist. Step number four, and again, for the fourth step to uh, success, the, how did I find success? It was also creating a, a monthly bookkeeping process. Many of you are, are asking in the Facebook groups, what, what do you do as a bookkeeper for your clients? And, and there are many things that we do, but at the core of what we do when we're providing monthly bookkeeping services, we're doing five things. We're recording transactions. We're reconciling those transactions. We're reviewing the transactions. We're making revisions, and then we're restricting the books. And I will go over each of these. First step in the monthly bookkeeping process is to record transactions. We'll do that through the bank feeds, there may be transactions that we may be entering manually, and uh, you may have apps that are integrated uh, with QuickBooks. So all the transactions essentially are being recorded on, onto the box. A second step is to reconcile. So you're going to prepare 
the bank and credit card statement uh, reconciliations. And for some clients and, and generally accrual uh, accounting clients, you may do a balance sheet account reconciliations as well. For our e-commerce clients, we do specific types of reconciliations for their e-commerce clearing accounts. Step three is review. And this is really important. You need to have a quality review process. You need to, whether it's you doing the work or you have a contractor or employees doing the bookkeeping, there needs to be a quality control process. Someone, either you or a manager or someone in your team needs to review the work for accuracy. At Maintenance, we actually, uh, we wanted to teach our team members how to review. Uh, review skills are not easy to teach or to develop. So we wanted them to learn how to review. And uh, as a result, we uh, have a couple of layers of review. One is a self-review. That means that the bookkeeper who has done the work for the client will review their own work using a checklist. So they're reviewing their own work. Then we have a manager who reviews the work as well. So that way we have two levels of review. And in fact, I didn't put it on, on the, um, the handout here, but we also have another layer of, of review where the team members review each other. And again, it's just so that we can teach them how to become reviewers. And you, you don't necessarily need to have team members review each other because it does take time, but we have found that that's the best way for team members to learn how to review. As I said, we use a checklist to make sure that we go step by step um, to review uh, everything. And we use the Keeper app, keeper.app um, to do that um, that review. We have um, essentially added all of our um, checklist steps into Keeper app to then follow the checklist and review everything. Step number four is revise. So after reviewing the books, after doing that quality control, the, there will be things that probably were not uh, categorized correctly. We want to make changes. And so during the, the revise step, we will make corrections and record adjustments based on that review process. So it's all part of the quality review and making corrections. And step number five is restrict. And that means that we're going to close the books in QuickBooks to keep either ourselves or the client from making any changes to the books because you don't want to, um, to have the client go in and undo something that you did after you put in all that work to, to uh, record, uh, reconcile, review, and adjust things. And then the client goes in and changes things. So we need to close the box and essentially secure um, the data that is there, that it, it has been uh, reconciled properly. Right. Right. Um, next step is managing work status and due dates. So as you know, when you're working with multiple clients, now you, you're not only keeping track of one client, but you have to keep track of multiple clients and you have to keep track of where are they where am I with all of these clients? So we set up a client status board with different categories. So starting from the left, we have a section for not started and waiting for client, in progress, in self-review, in manager review, notify client, and completed. And we started tracking these initially in Asana to where we could have a project board and physically drag the client names from one category to another. So for example, if they were not started and then all of a sudden, okay, we got everything we need. Now they're in progress. So we will move them to the in progress column. Or <clears throat> uh, for example, if we were in progress doing all the work and now, okay, now we're waiting for the client to answer some questions, then we would move the client, uh, the client's name from in progress to waiting for client. So as I said, we did this in Asana initially. Now we're using the uh, Keeper app 
and within Keeper that we're able to track them uh, pretty much the same way. Here. So here are some suggest suggested, boy, I cannot talk today, <laughs> suggested workflow management apps that you can take a look. I mentioned Asana already. I think for a, a brand new bookkeeper, Asana is your best friend because you can get a free version of Asana. And then you can upgrade to a paid version of Asana. Keeper app is my absolute favorite. It just does so many wonderful things. Um, you can go to my YouTube channel. I think I have one or two videos in which um, I, there's a demo of the Keeper app with Ben Stein from Keeper. And, and so he, he'll show you everything that you need to know. Uh, so go ahead and look for those videos in my YouTube channel. Uh, there's also Financial Sense and there's also Client Hub. Those are the ones that I have looked at that I think are, are good workflow management apps. Now I know there are many others and uh, and you may even ask me in the Q&A, what about this one? What about that one? These are the ones that I think are um, the ones that are going to help you because they already have a lot of the functionality set up, whereas um, there are some that you have to go in and, and really cust highly customize. And perhaps that's just not the way that, you know, you need to spend your time. And some of us are not that gifted with customizing uh, software applications. And step number five, team and client collaboration. When collaborating with our team and with our clients, we have a couple of goals. One is to eliminate information silos, to reduce and eliminate emails, phone calls, and texts. This was an issue when I was um, scaling my business and clients would email us. And this is before we got some of these wonderful apps such as the Keeper app or Financial Sets that um, clients would email, but they would email Susie, my bookkeeper, for example. Okay, they are emailing Susie. Susie's uh, communicating back and forth, but we have no idea what they're saying. Uh, you know, what is Susie saying to the client? And then uh, all of a sudden, Susie calls in sick. And now we have no way to access Susie's emails to know what she and the client have discussed, or maybe the client sent her something. We, we have no idea. So we realized very quickly that we needed to eliminate the use of email as a form of communication. Uh, we rarely do phone calls, thank goodness, with our clients, and we uh, we don't do text. Our clients don't text us. We really don't have an issue with phone calls or text with our clients. But you may, uh, and so you need to make sure that you eliminate that as a method of communication with your client, unless that's what you want to do. But I know many of you don't want to get texts and, and phone calls from your clients at, you know, any <laughs> at three in the morning, for example. And then uh, another reason here recently for eliminating emails is uh, a lot of phishing scams. And uh, there are a lot of um, emails that you could even get an email that looks like it's from your client. You wouldn't even know that it's not from your client. And they may be telling you to, okay, go ahead and pay such and such a vendor. And, um, and there are some bookkeepers who have done that and then realized that that was not their client instructing them to do that. And then they pay $20,000 to, to some, you know, scam vendor. So, um, number one, reduce the use of emails, phones, and texts. And number two, don't touch your client's money. The client should always uh, pay their own vendors. Um, all right. And the second goal for your team and client collaboration is to set client boundaries. Because again, if you don't set those boundaries, those clients are going to call, text, and email you whenever they want. So what are some team and client collaboration apps that you can work with? Um, on the left, I have what I call standalone apps. That means that that's all they do. So for example, Microsoft Teams is a good team and client collaboration app. Uh, Slack that's uh, is very similar. And then there are what I call all-in-one apps, meaning that they do other things. Uh, Keeper app, again, is my favorite um, just because it does so many things. You can request 
documents from your clients. You can track your client status. You can um, uh, what it is, ask questions of your client, um, communicate back and forth. Um, financial sense does something similar. Client Hub as well. Uncat uh, and Lysio do as well. As I said, Keeper is just my favorite. I just love Keeper. But yeah, you take a look at the others uh, if you like as well. Uh, and so that brings me to the biggest pain point that we have when working with clients is that you know, we have questions for them because in some cases we don't know what's there. What is this transaction for? I don't know. And so we need to be able to have a method for tracking uncategorized transactions. In the past, we used to put everything to ask my accountant and then we would run a report from uh QuickBooks exported to Excel or to a Google sheet, then we would send it to the client and then the client would take their time and send it back and it was very clunky. And so we came up with a different method. So first of all, uh, you need to have a way as you're working through all of the bookkeeping and especially when you're going through your bank feeds and categorizing those. When you don't know what a transaction is, you need to categorize it to a separate account. As I said, we were using as my accountant, and now we uh, we have it. Uh, it's called like Ask Joe. So ask, and whatever the client name is, ask Veronica, ask Susie. Okay, so ask the client account, and as we're going through, we anything. If we don't know what it is, it goes into that account. Then, uh, as I said before, we used a spreadsheet and sent this list to the client. Now we have automated the process using a Keeper app. Um, so you can categorize a transaction in QuickBooks uh, to ask Joe, for example. And then in Keeper is going to pull all of those um, transactions and then you'll be able to send questions to your client. You, I believe you can do the same with Financial Sense and Uncat is another app that you can use. Um, to do that. So here's an example from the Keeper app where um, it tracks uh, uh, questions for the client, whether they're transaction questions or non-transaction questions. And then you can uh, put the question in for the client. And then we also have uh, templates that we use so that our, our team members are not having to need to sit and think, what? how will I word this to the client? We have a list of of um, templates for them to use, I guess, template scripts, however you want to refer to them. And then um, those are in Keeper and then they just copy paste onto uh, Keeper or within Keeper to send the client those questions. So to recap, what was the, uh, the key to my success? How did I go from this scared, uh, you know, scared accountant, shy, didn't know anything about sales or marketing, uh, didn't want to talk to people I didn't know. And how did I go from that to where I am now with a team of, we're a team of seven now. We are working with clients nationwide and have a profitable business. And the five steps were uh, tech tools, document management, client onboarding, a monthly bookkeeping process and team and client collaboration. Uh, I'll go ahead and share some resources with you if you'd like to know more about what I have talked about. Go to my YouTube channel at 5mbvideo.com. Uh, also go to the 5MB Academy at 5mbacademy.com. I have a lot of free and paid courses on the 5MB Academy and I'll talk about that in just a moment and sign up to be notified about all of my latest content, webinars, and courses. And so you have the link there, and then you also have uh, the code that you can scan with your phone uh, to get uh, signed up for my mailing list. And I believe um, Jill will also be sharing those links with you. And that brings me to 5MB Academy. So as I mentioned before that, you can go to 5MB Academy for free and paid resources. And I started 5MB Academy with the goal of empowering and educating bookkeepers because I was tired um, from you know hearing from my my clients that oh my well my bookkeeper messed up my books and I heard it so much that 
I thought I need to do something about it. And as a result, I developed and, and really uh, this, this passion was born to educate and empower you. And uh, as I said at the start of the webinar, that it is my honor and privilege to do that and to, to be able to share with you. So over time, I put together several courses, including um, a system for uh, cleaning up and diagnosing QuickBooks Online, the Virtual Bookkeepers Roadmap, um, engagement letters, com client communication, uh, Shopify course, and much more. Um, you can learn all about all of the courses at 5MB Academy at 5MBAcademy.com. Uh, but I did want to highlight a couple of courses that I think if you're looking to, to uh, get more uh, from what I just uh, shared with you in this webinar, one is the client onboarding checklist. So that it will give you the step-by-step -step process for streamlining your onboarding process. It includes your workflow diagram, recommended onboarding apps list of documents to request from your clients, and then the full client kickoff meeting agenda so that you know exactly what to say to your new client. And there's also the virtual bookkeepers roadmap. And the, the roadmap is really a full program um, that where you can learn online. So everything is online. Uh, you can learn all of the workflows, the tools, uh, that you need to build a, success, a successful QBO virtual bookkeeping business. So I mentioned the five steps in this webinar. In the Virtual Bookkeepers Roadmap, I go in deep, I do a deep dive of each of those sections and how um, you can then select your apps, uh, set up your document management system, your client onboarding, your monthly bookkeeping process, and your team and client collaboration. So if you're struggling with um, with uh, maybe you're working really hard, but you're not profitable, you're struggling with, hey, I'm drowning in work, but I need to hire people, but I, I just don't even have a system. This is the course that you need. And again, it, everything is online. Um, you can access it at any time. And we are having a spring savings sale. So all courses on 5MB Academy um, are, um, are uh, on sale with a 12% discount. The sale has started today and it will end a week from today on Tuesday, April the 30th at 11.59 p.m. PST. So uh, in order to get the discount, you need the discount code, which is spring 12 off. And um, Jill will share that the link to the courses with you as well as the discount code. And then you also have um, to where you can scan uh, the code to go directly to the courses. But remember, you do need the discount code and you'll need to put that in the checkout to get the discount code. All right, I'm going to um, now share my, let's see, I cannot talk, okay, I'm gonna say what I'm gonna do and then I will do it because I can't talk and do it at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to switch over to doing um, the, the Q&A, answering your questions, and I will share the Q&A uh, list so that you guys can see it as well. And uh, there we go. Okay, fantastic. So, yeah, there we go. Let me move this so I have it right in front of me. All right, so I am in the Q&A. And so if you have a question, put it in the Q&A tab. And that's it. that is where I will answer you. I am not looking at the chat. Um, all right. So first question is from Julius. In your experience, do you think a solopreneur can abide by the boundaries discussed? Um, so if you're talking about built building your systems and having a, a process for doing everything, absolutely. And I think you have to in order to be organized and in order to work efficiently and profitably. Um, that you need to, and, and even going back to the ideal business that you, you want to build, the ideal client that you want to work with and the services that you want to provide. You need to have clarity into all of that. And then as much as possible, systematize yourself because number one, you'll be happier doing the work. Um, you'll be more profitable. And then if you ever wanted to hire 
of someone, then you have the systems and processes in place. And I would say most importantly is that why systematize your business? Because the systems become the assets in your business. Your clients are not an asset to your business. Your employees are not an asset to your business. Clients come and go, employees come and go, but you will always have your systems and you can sell your systems and processes. You can sell your business to someone else. They're not going to buy something from you if you got stickies everywhere, just like I did when I started, but they will buy a system. Jennifer asks, does the client have to have the Keeper app as well? Um, so when you're using a, the Keeper app, <clears throat> you're paying for it and the client uses it, they're not paying for it, you pay for it. So um, the, the client then can be a user, essentially a client user on your Keeper. Shelly asks, is the accountant, uh, or is the account Ask Joe in Keeper or in QBO? Um, it, you set it up in QBO and then Keeper will, it says Keeper, uh, syncs to QuickBooks. It will pull it into, um, into Keeper. Um, oh, I guess I got out of order here. Maybe my questions are, People are voting on the questions and they go up. So I'll stick with the top of the list here. How does Dext and, and Keeper compare to QuickBooks receipt feature? Um, okay, so the QuickBooks receipt capture feature is very limited. So if you have maybe a client that is very, very simple, you could put them on that. But Dext and Keeper are, they, uh, you can um, split transactions. You can add uh, classes, locations, job costing. Um, and so they're, they're completely different. I personally don't, um, I no longer use any, any sort of additional feature that QuickBooks adds, uh, like the receipt uh, feature, just because in the past they've taken features away. And so you don't want to put all your eggs into that one basket and have it be taken away. Uh, Kimberly asks, do I have a sample review checklist? I do not. So that is included in the Virtual Bookkeepers Roadmap course because it is part of the full system of doing the monthly bookkeeping process and then um, the the review portion. Uh, Kathy is asking, what did you use for the monthly bookkeeping status board? Um, so Asana was the what we initially started using and you can create a board. I, it may be in the paid version, I'm not 100% sure, um, but you can create a, a project board and then move things from one status to another. Uh, Christine asked, can I clarify, restrict? I think I already did just based on when she asked the question, but that's just closing the box. I just needed another R word, <laughs> so that's what I used. Um, Audrey is asking, do you use a password management uh, app? Yes, we use uh, Soho Vault. The Soho Vault is what we use. Uh, Rashida is asking, uh, do you or any of your team do coaching or mentoring? Uh, we do not anymore. We used to, but uh, we have moved away uh, from that. Um, however, if you purchase the Virtual Bookkeepers Roadmap, uh, you do get access to my private student group where you can interact with me and ask uh, questions within the Facebook group. Alicia is asking, what app do you recommend for accounts receivable? Uh, you can use uh, Melio for accounts receivable. Um, and honestly, we don't have not done a whole lot with accounts receivable in the past. So I, I, there may be more. That's just the one that I can think of uh, off the top of my head. Um, Mansoor is asking, what CRM app is recommended? So if we're talking about client relationship management app, um, HoneyBook is actually one that um, that Jill, my assistant, and I have had our eye on. I think Jill is now using it. Uh, so if you're looking at it from the standpoint of managing uh, prospects um, and uh, sales and that sort of thing, then a honey book would be one to look at. Carolyn is asking, what do you recommend your clients use for sales tax? Uh, well, since we work with e-commerce clients, 
we refer them to a professional service called Sales Tax and More. That is Sales Tax and More. And uh, so they take care of all of the sales tax. We don't, I don't recommend using apps to do sales taxes or even doing your client sales taxes unless they're just very, very simple sales tax. Carolyn is asking, how do you file loan paperwork or assets? Uh, then if there are, if the client has loans, uh, so from a standpoint, I think you're asking me about the document management that we would then have uh, within our uh, team folder would have a, a separate subfolder for um, loans. And then if they have multiple loans, then we have a folder for each loan. Karen is asking, how do you handle cash purchases? Uh, we don't work with clients who use cash <laughs> primarily just because it, it's just almost impossible to manage that. You could put them on Dext um, so that they could, you know, as they're spending cash, maybe write it on a piece of paper and um, take a picture of it. The IRS will accept that um, or if they got a receipt that they would take a picture of it with the with the keeper, not keeper, sorry, with the Dext app. But beyond that, um, we just pretty much don't work with clients who use cash. Um, Camille is asking, how do you get new clients? Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to answer that question <laughs> just because it would, I would probably have to do another webinar for that. However, um, look for some free and paid resources on 5MB Academy. I do have a course on marketing that shows you what you need to do to uh, attract um, the right clients. And then there are some videos that are on my YouTube channel as well. And I'm sure in a few months, I will do a webinar specifically on uh, how to find clients. Um, Ashley asked, do you charge extra the first month to cover onboarding services? Generally, yes, but we generally discount uh, onboarding just from the standpoint of what I call sweeten the deal. So um, we generally tell clients that we charge, um, we do charge for onboarding. It's the same amount as their monthly bookkeeping. So let's say if we were charging $500 a month for monthly bookkeeping, then their onboarding would be $500 but we generally will discount it to say 50% off just to to help the client feel good about you know becoming our client. So most everybody likes to get a discount and that's where we discount. Uh, Lori asked uh, for tips on how to cover these boundaries with existing clients that you feel are overstepping. Um, I think it's it's always about communication during the sales process of how we work with clients and what we expect from them. Um, having wording in your engagement letter um, to cover things such as uh, out of scope requests. And we do have an engagement letters course in 5MB Academy that people are say is, a, is great just from all of the, the wording that we, we give you to add to your existing engagement letters to cover yourself for those things. And then um, onboarding is another area where, again, you have to reiterate um, those boundaries and then you just have to keep reiterating the boundaries. If you have someone that then they will not comply, you, you likely need to part ways with them um, because, um, you know, who wants to deal with someone who's not respecting you and your boundaries? King is asking, um, okay, if I'm brand new to bookkeeping, where should I start the virtual bookkeeping roadmap? Uh, or, or where should I start? Should it be the virtual bookkeeping roadmap course. So <clears throat> all of my courses assume that you have bookkeeping training. So I am not teaching you the basics of bookkeeping, like debits, credits, journal entries, or how to use QuickBooks. My courses assume that you have that training already. So if, as a king, if you have bookkeeper training and you've done your pro advisor certification or you know QuickBooks, then the virtual bookkeepers roadmap would be a good course for you to start with just because then it'll help you set up the systems and processes that you need. 
Um, so we have students who start with that course. Some of them start with our cleanup course also, because you're generally going to work with clients uh, who have messy books and you're going to have to clean them up. Uh, Carolyn um, asked about Keeper and security. Um, that would be a great question to ask them. So I don't know all the specifics. I know they have security. I just don't, I don't have all the words to explain it all. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but you can reach out to them and ask them. Uh, uh, Yuyi is asking, how do you manage your workflows in both Keeper and Asana so it does not appear like your workflows are in multiple places? And that's a great question because we struggled with the same thing because we were in Asana and then we slowly started to move to Keeper. And so where we ended up now is that anything client related lives in Keeper and is managed through Keeper. And we are, we're using Asana now only for internal projects. So um, like marketing, um, human resources, and any projects that we're doing, is those are managed in Asana for project management purposes, but anything client related now lives in Keeper. But at some point there was an overlap, so it was a little painful. Um, Shelly asked, is the account, uh, asked Joe in Key, oh, I think I already answered Shelly's question, so we can mark that as answered. Um, Kathy, Asked, how many hours of videos are in the Virtual Bookkeepers Roadmap? It's about, um, I believe it's about seven to eight hours. And if, if you think about it, if you did one hour a week, you would be done in about seven to eight uh, weeks with the course. Um, does the Virtual Bookkeepers Roadmap include how to get clients? No, it does not because there is a separate marketing course uh, on 5MB Academy on uh, the marketing system for introverted bookkeepers. So look for that course. Um, Melissa is asking, can you estimate the cost of overhead for tech stack applications? Oh my goodness, um, not off the top of my head. So um, no, however, I will say that um, you do have to be willing to invest. Um, there are many free or almost free apps. So let me back up. There are many free and almost free apps. And I have um, a, a reel, I believe it's a reel, on, on my Facebook, in my YouTube channel, where I go over free and almost free apps. And um, Jill, if you can find that and and share it with um and share the link with everyone, that would be helpful. If not, look for that in my YouTube channel for a free and almost free apps. And so you can definitely start um, with a lower cost, but over time you need to be uh, willing and able to invest. There are many bookkeepers and accountants, people in our industry who are looking for cheap or free. And ultimately, you will get what you pay for. And so you have to be of the mindset you are running a business and you need to invest in your business. But in terms of what is the dollar amount, I couldn't say. Um, just because I, it's not one of those things I retain in my head. Mansoor is asking, um, how different is the virtual bookkeeping from previous ones? So if you're talking about the virtual bookkeepers roadmap, uh, because it's been updated, how different is it from the new one? So if you bought the old one, you now have the new one because I've updated the course. Um, so, uh, but it is updated uh, primarily for apps just because apps have changed. So I updated it for all of the apps and my app recommendations. I give very specific app recommendations now, whereas before I did not. And I also have an updated onboarding process. Uh, Daniel is asking, uh, it's nice to hear again, uh, to hear me. Hello, Daniel. How do you price your monthly bookkeeping jobs? Um, all right. So I use revenue as a basis for pricing monthly bookkeeping. And uh, there is a course in the 5MB Academy uh, called the Simple Pricing System that goes through and shows you how I do that. But the reason that I started using revenues as a method for uh, pricing was because I did everything else in the past and it took hours. 
took hours to count transactions. It took hours to review bank statements or whatever it was that I was doing. It took hours to put together this giant spreadsheet where I put all this information in there. And ultimately, I didn't get any better result than uh, when I just th thought, forget it. This is way too time consuming. It stresses me out. I just need something simple. And so I went with a simple pricing system based on revenues. And you have that in the, um, in the 5MB Academy. Um, uh, Rami is asking if I'm an accountant graduate and I want to work as a virtual account accountant, where should I start? How is the market for virtual bookkeepers and how to set the proper pricing overseas for the hourly rate? You would have to find accounting and bookkeeping firms that, uh, who hire, um, virtual, um, virtual, um, oh, my brain has the virtual employees. Sorry. I was still reading your question. <laughs> so who hire virtual employees and, um, and I know a lot of them want experience. So it's one of those things that, Hey, I have the education, but I don't have the experience. And so, um, you need to look for the ones to, um, hire, uh, people virtually, number one. And how is the market for virtual bookkeepers? I mean, there's always a shortage of employees in the accounting industry. The problem in our industry is that people don't have time to train you. And so they want to hire people with experience. And, and so you're going to have to work harder at finding someone who would hire you when you don't have experience. And in terms of the hourly rate, I, um, I don't know, um, I think, you know, in the U.S., we pay what we pay. I don't know what uh, if people would pay different for someone being overseas. All right. My, I am ahead. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Normally, I'm scrambling to answer questions. So if you have any other questions, put them in the Q&A. But I think we might be done. That's exciting. Um, all right. So uh, thank you for joining me. Let me kind of get back to me close this out. There we go. All right. Thank you for joining me uh, today. I'm so excited that you were with me. Uh, I know that this is a, a topic that you're very, very interested in. So make sure that you go to my YouTube channel, to 5MB Academy. If you're ready to purchase one of the courses, take advantage of the sale. As I said, it ends in, in one week. And we will see you next time. Bye, everyone.